Hi, this is your host Sapil Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. Today we have with us Dave Birmingham, Director of Customer Success at Sios Technology. Today's topic is empowering education, enhancing system availability. Uh, let's look at, you know, since COVID happened, there was an increase of kind of uh, tech driven classroom, uh, more and more, not only K-12 schools, universities, my kids, they were all doing everything virtual. So talk a bit about with this rise of technology-driven classrooms, how can, of course, unplanned system downtimes affect the modern students' learning experience, whether it's K-12 schools or universities? As you mentioned, you know, especially with COVID, really accelerated the adoption of the technology-driven classrooms and it's made education increasingly reliant on digital platforms. So any unplanned um, system downtimes can significantly disrupt this modern learning environment, and particularly in the K through 12 schools and universities. So when systems fail, it not only leads to loss of you know, valuable instruction time, but also hampers access to critical digital resources like eBooks and online assignments and educational videos. The, uh, the interruption can you know, result in kind of a cascading effect affecting the student's ability to keep up with the curriculum, which diminishes their engagement and potentially impacting their academic uh, performance. This younger generation of students um, being digital you know, experts that are particularly impacted as their learning experiences are deeply intertwined with the technology. In the case of colleges and universities, what are some of the potential repercussions of, uh, you know, let's see, you know, registration errors or delays due to system downtime during peak traffic seasons, which may not have directly to do with the actual uh, back and forth interaction with the teachers, but just to get on that classroom. Having three kids in college myself at this present time, I, I know exactly the challenges they face. Um, a lot of that is, uh, you know, during the peak, uh, registration period um, you know, where, you know, you, you know, my son is a senior, there's like one class he has to get and there's, you know, might be 12 seats and uh, 15 people trying to get in that class. So if the system's down during the, those peak registration periods, the colleges and universities can face a high risk of, you know, system overloads from potential downtime because everyone's logging on exactly 6 a.m. on Monday morning whenever they said that registration was going to open up. Uh, that downtime can lead to significant registration errors or delays, which can affect a large number of uh, students and staff. And the implications range from students missing out on essential courses for their majors to delay uh, to, uh, or delays in our financial aid disbursements. And housing assignments is another big thing. Everyone wants to be in the best housing, and, and you know, so having downtime can certainly impact that their ability to choose their housing. So those disruptions not only cause you know, immediate stress and confusion, but can have also long-term consequences, you know, affecting students' academic trajectories and financial situations. And these situations can strain the institution's administrative resources and even tarnish its reputation for efficiency and reliability. Even if this uh, rise of, you know, online courses, education, picked during COVID time, but after that, what was realized that because of, you know, virtual learning, you can ex get access to a lot of university or you can get access to a lot of students which may not be physically uh, present there. So there has been a, a kind of a growing number of students who are participating in remote learning from, you know, different parts of it. It doesn't really matter. And it's not just about universities, you know, a lot of other specialized courses even tech courses, you know, you can become expert in Kubernetes or data production and you can do a lot of courses online. Talk about looking at this this grow, growth of students who want to leverage remote learning. What is the importance of, you know, 24-7 system availability so that, you know, as we talked about earlier, the some of the shortcomings or, you know, downside of uh, downtime, uh, so that uh, these students don't suffer, irrespective of, once again, the demographics. The rise of remote learning, um, so educational institutions, you know, they now are catering to a diverse and a global student body. 
So that means that 24-7 system availability is more critical than ever. It's not just, you know, 9 to 5 in, at the university campus. It's 24-7 access. So students in, in different time zones require constant access to the, those learning materials and the virtual classrooms and the support services to ensure a seamless educational experience. The downtimes in those systems can uh, create significant barriers for international students, leading to an uneven educational opportunity and potentially impacting the institution's ability to maintain a truly global and inclusive education environment. So continuous system availability is uh, not just a technological requirement, but a commitment to educational equality and access accessibility for all students regardless of their geographic location. What are some of the major challenges that you know organizations face when it comes to balancing cutting edge IT solutions and of course budget constraint? I spent six years on my local um, school board as a school board member so I know budgets at the local you know the K through 12 is um, can be very 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 sh uh, strained and there's always competition for we need new uh, new books for history this year, or you know um, some some computers in the computer lab, or Chromebooks for the kids, or whatever it might be. But you know, very often the you know low um, the high availability and investment is, is can sometimes be seen as a um, insurance policy, really. Uh, so, so it might not get the attention uh, or the, you know, it's not the, it's not the shiny thing that people will see, but balancing the need for advanced IT solutions against budget constraints um, is a common challenge for all education institutions, whether it's K through 12 or, or your, your college level um, institutions. But having the cost of not investing in high availability and disaster recovery can be significantly higher than the initial investments. You think about the extended downtimes can lead to substantial direct and indirect losses. Uh, those losses, again, include lost productivity, diminished student satisfaction, uh, potential enrollment declines, and the damage to the institution's reputation. So investing in HA and DR solutions is a proactive strategy that in the long run can save institutions from the far greater cost and reputational damage associated with system failures and data losses. As critical as availability of the system, well, students are logged in, which is data. I mean, today is not just institutions, almost everybody is, is storing vast amount of data. I mean, some data is very, very sensitive. Can you also talk about the, the importance and potential risks if they are not ensuring data production and high availability for this sensitive data. Yeah, so we're talking about data protection and high availability, it's kind of two different things, right? So of course you need to make sure your data is available and, and not lost and, you know, so, um, and, and highly available. So the high availability and data protection kind of go hand in hand, um, but data protection itself um, in terms of protecting against uh, you know, your sensitive data, including, you know, uh, personal information of students and staff and your academic records and financial details and the consequences of data breaches can be severe. So you want to make sure you have, um, you know, beyond availability solutions, you know, some data protection solutions in place as well. Um, you know, data protection can, you know, can range, the risk range from, you know, identity theft to privacy violations to, you know, legal repercussions and loss of the public trust. So in an era where data breaches are increasingly common, maintaining high availability and robust data protection is not only a technical imperative, but also a critical component of institutional responsibility and ethical governance, for sure. The fact is that every system is not equal. You know, these systems are, uh, uh, they have different importance. But uh, if you look at uh, the tolerance for system downtime, does it vary between critical systems like learning management systems and other administrative systems? And if yes, uh, what is that uh, tolerance there? The tolerance for system downtime can vary significantly across the different types of systems you know, in education. Um, critical systems, like you mentioned, the learning management systems are integral to the teaching and learning process. Thus, you know, they require a higher degree of reliability and minimal downtime. 
any interruption in, in those systems can directly impact the course delivery and the student learning and the assessment process. Whereas, you know, other systems, maybe administrative systems are important for the smooth operation of the institution. They may be able to tolerate slightly longer downtimes as they do not directly affect the immediate teaching and learning activities. But, you know, prolonged issues in these systems can still lead to significant administrative challenges and frustration among students. Typically, when you're planning your business continuity plans, you, you're going to create different categories and put the systems in different categories in terms of what is your downtime tolerance and then make sure you plan whatever you know availability system you have in place uh, to, to meet those levels of um, downtime commitments. How do you folks help these institutions, organizations to maintain a consistent and reliable learning environment as we talk about some of the challenge there, especially when, you know, we are relying more and more on digital tools and platforms. SIOs can play a, a crucial role in helping educational institutions maintain a consistent and reliable learning environment amidst the growing reliance on digital uh, tools and platforms. So we provide high availability and disaster recovery solutions to ensure critical applications and data are protected against outages and disruptions. Uh, this protection is vital in the educational landscape, well, increasingly dependent on digital resources where any interruption can have far reaching impacts on both the educational processes and the institution's reputation. So with science's solutions, educational institutions can you know, offer more resilient and dependable digital learning environments, which are essential for today's uh, technology-driven integrated solution. Dave, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And as usual, I would love to chat with you again to discuss another topic related to high availability and data disaster recovery. Thank you. Uh, sure.